Hello and welcome, Katie here. Thanks so much for stopping by. I am excited to be back with today's project. It's a little bit different for me. I'm actually going to be using a download from Creative Fabrica to cut out on my Cricut Maker. And if you're interested in receiving this background and the font free, stay tuned to the end of the video and I'm gonna show you how you can get it. Okay, so we're gonna start off in Creative Fabrica. And just a little recap, you got 127,000 fonts and you got 6 million graphics. Um, this is a card maker's playground, honestly. Um, so you've got fonts, so you've got word dyes and word cutouts and um, alphabets and all kinds of stuff, you know, that you can you can cut out uh, with either vinyl that you can use on your card, you know, your card making, because you can put vinyl on cardstock. Uh, and you can also do um, cut out cardstock with it, depending on how thick the line is. That's my kitty kit mambo. Depending on how thick the line is, maybe you want to go with vinyl versus cardstock, just because vinyl can cut those really fine lines. Um, whereas cardstock, it can be a little bit trickier. Um, but sky's the limit. Um, now I like to do searches on stuff and, uh, or just general, um, like go to the 3d SVGs under graphics and start there. And I just start looking to see what I could use to create a background or what I could use to create a stencil. Um, you know, this is a perfect example because this is an actual card design. Um, and so you can see the different layouts that it offers. Um, great for stencil, a great for a background die cut, you know, to, to just have a, a cool watercolor background or um, even inlaid die cutting you could do with this because you just cut out different cardstock of the same example and then uh, in, re in place, um, you know, the different colored cardstock into the floral images. So lots and lots and lots of ideas come to mind for this. Um, what I'm going to use is uh, a download that I got here that is, uh, I'm just going to punch it in spring, it should pop up for me. So the spring decorative frames, this guy right here. And in this file, you get all four of these and they're individual. So you don't have to do any separating or anything like that. Uh, but you would hit the download. Mine would generally come up here to this arrow, uh, but I always pop over into um, my finder. I'm on a Mac, uh, but I'm sure it's not any different using, you know, Windows based computer. Um, so what I'm going to look for is the spring decorative frames in my downloads. I'm going to double click that. Now, normally it would come with, uh, in a zip file. I don't know if I have any zip files on here. Let me see. Oh, okay. Here's one. Here's a zip file. So it's going to look like this initially, this guy right here. But when you double click it, it's going to open up into a file, a blue folder in my case. Um, so I'm going to come back up here to spring decorative frames. Now I want the SVGs. So these are all the SVGs that come, you know, the four designs. And so now we're going to pop into Cricut Design Space. And we're going to do some foiling in today's video with our Cricut uh, Maker. And so um, we're going to pull a font also, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that once uh, Design Space loads up for me. Uh, while that's loading, I do want to... Um, show you that one of the best features about, I'm just going to minimize this for a second, about um, Creative Fabrica is that you can heart things. So let me, I'm just going to un, unheart it and, um, Mambo, come on cub, come on cub, move, move. Um, I'm going to back out of that. And go back in it might not be there but we'll see okay so um i was quick about it so you see this add to favorites when you're searching use it if you see something that you like heart it because if you get to page 10 of 2000 you're never going to remember what 
you found uh, to be able to go back and find it. So even if you never use it, um, definitely go in and save it to a, as a favorite. And that way it's going to be put in to your favorites and then you have these categories that you can obviously have them all together and then they break them down by category so you can just quickly go in and find stuff that you might be looking for okay so design space is opened uh, i am going to go just right up to new project and i'm going to show you quick how easy it is to download upload rather uh, so just a new project we're not doing anything here yet so just getting into the canvas we're going to go to upload that's right here on the left hand side towards the bottom and you can see i've got one of those images here i actually have two other ones so i'm going to upload the last one of that file so i'm going to click on upload image and then browse this part is totally wherever you have saved your downloads now I, like I said before, save mine right in my downloads. This just happened to be the last thing that I opened up. So it's Design Space is opening it up right there for me. So when you're in Design Space, you can click on and you've opened your folder. You can click on and see the images. You get a preview. So in my case, we've got four things that are available in the package. And I've got three of the four downloaded already so I need to download this one so I'm going to hit open and then it's going to be right here then I'm going to come over to the lower right hand side and click upload and there it is uploaded now if I want to add this to the canvas I would click it and highlight the square and then it's going to say add to canvas we're not going to use that one today so let's I need to go to my all and click the one that I want, which is right here. So I can just hit add to canvas. We'll hit view. So hopefully it'll go right there. Okay. So it's going to take a second to load. And here you can see it gives us the measurements as it pulls into de to design space. So it's pretty big, 10 by 14. So we're going to unlock it. And I want to make this an A2 size. So I actually want to give it a border eighth of an inch 4.13 is what we're going to bring that down to by 5.38 oh, I need that one out of there we're going to enter and then we're going to lock it back up okay so now we've resized now if you have uh, word dies already that you want to add to this great for this if you want to cut out within this that now you can go ahead and add your text i want to do some foiling so that's what we're going to do next so we're going to come over to text i'm going to open up a text box and i'm just going to write in uh thank because I am going to write thank you. I'm going to foil thank you. But I want to show you uh, something that happened to me. And it might happen to you depending on what fonts you pick. Um, so here, this is the Cricut Sans. So we're using a Cricut font here. But I want to use a system font. So I'm going to come over to my system. And this shows the list of 341 fonts that I have in my system. Now, the one that I picked that I'm going to use from um, my favorites I've added to my favorites is from Creative Fabrica so I'm going to scroll down because I've just highlighted all my fonts and I believe it's on the second page um, is this Alec and Willem Will I Am you could say it a bunch of different ways but this is the one I'm going to use and because I'm foiling and this applies to your writing fonts so this is what we're you want to think of it as we're writing even though we're using foil. You need a single line font. This is important. Um, and the reason is, is because the single line fonts give you the ability to use a sketch pen, a foil quill, or engraving. Now, obviously, Cricut came out with their own foil tool. So, you know, un unless you have an older Cricut that you have to use the, the quill with, but this is the type of font you want, the line, single line version. Now we're going to go to the next picture and it's going to show you the difference. So this is the normal font, the cursive font, Ooh, sorry, uh, but this is the one that is the single line that's going to write for you or draw or sketch. 
If you were to use this cursive font, it would give an outline and it wouldn't fill it in. So you need that single line to fill in. Now, keep track of the name of this font, the Alican. We're going to go back over to Cricut. We're going to punch that font in, Alican. Just shorten it. And it's right there. It automatically defaults to the cut. We want to make it a foil. We're going to go bold. But look what happens. This isn't the font that we want. Okay. So we're going to go back over to our downloads. And we're going to find that font and open the folder because I want to show you something. There's several fonts that I've downloaded that... Um, that have double so you get two different options and here in the folder it shows you that this one is the single line font and this one would just be that regular cursive font because it doesn't have single line in it now um, creative fabrica puts on their website um, in their downloading of fonts thing it's in usually in most descriptions um, to use the otf so i'm going to click on the otf double click that and it's going to open up uh, this box that normally would say to install. Now I've already installed it, so I'm not going to do that again. But um, it would say install, and so you would install. But the important thing here is, and you can tell because of how fine the line is, the important thing here is the single line 2022. That's actually the name of this particular font. It Once it downloads, it's no longer the Alican William. So let's go back in here and let's go single. In fact, you could just write single. Um, and anything that's got single in it, now we're going to go single line, break it down even more. And this one, we've got two that have that in the title. But we know from our text box here, for installing that it's the single line 2022. So if you ever have trouble um, finding, you know you have two fonts, but uh, Design Space isn't showing you both of them based on the initial name of the font. This is the only one I had seemed to have the problem with. But if you find that, um, just know that maybe you got to go back into your downloads, check that file again, um, and double check the name. Um, to be able to find it. So now we can go and fix this. And we're in right here. We're going to minimize that. Now I am actually going to duplicate this because I need to get my U in there. And while you, um, and then we're going to add this right to here. And I'm not going to get real fancy with it because I want to keep this video moving. It, it's pretty long process, you know, to go through all and do all this and design this stuff. Uh, but having these SVGs really speeds up the process. It's more of the fine details that you want to put on it. And in my case that I want to put on it. Okay, so we're going to just attach this so that we can get everything together and we can move it around. But now I'm done. I don't want to do anything else to this and I'm going to make it. But we've got a problem and I'm going to show you here in just one second. There's no words. So I had to do a Google search because I'm like, what the heck? This should work because it shows right here in Design Space that it'll work. And um, apparently it's a known problem with single line fonts uh, in Design Space. So uh, all you have to do, we're going to come back, just came back. We're going to detach everything. Okay. And then we're going to grab our thank you. Got to go over to the right column and pull them out. We're just going to move these over. Um, and we're going to, uh, I did the single line for a reason because it just makes it easier. Uh, but if you have it all together, it's the same, same concept. Okay. Uh, so we've highlighted, we're going to come up to advanced and we're going to hit that drop down, and we're going to ungroup to letters. Okay. And then you can see over here on the right that it's broken everything down into individual letters. Now we're going to reattach them. Okay, so we can put that here, and I'm going to shrink this down a little bit more. It's hard to see. Oh. And then uh, the same for the U. So we're going to highlight it. We're going to come to Advance. We're going to ungroup to Letters. You can see them right down in here. And then we're going to reattach them. 
and then we're going to stick it on our panel and then we're going to reattach everything again so everything's together and then we're going to come over to make it select our mat and now you can see that you'll be able to foil. If you don't go through those steps, nothing's going to show up but those two little weird marks uh, that happen to come with it into the onto the mat. So uh, I'll link the lady's video up below because she actually did a video um, showing two different ways. This way, which I found super easy and um, another way using um, a graphic design software, something similar to Inkscape. Uh, I can't remember Affinity, something like that uh, is what she used. I just found this to be super quick and simple uh, to be able to fix it. Now we're going to go and continue. And the one thing that I'll recommend for this type of cutting is 65 pound weight cardstock. Uh, this is such an intricate design that anything heavier than this, the machine has a hard time cutting the fine lines. It ends up just tearing the paper. So definitely go with the 65 pound weight cardstock um, for any type of intricate design. Now I did have small success with the heavyweight watercolor paper that I have, the water or the hot pressed. Um, but I, of course, use the watercolor paper setting, but I actually increased the pressure. I went from the default to just selecting more pressure, um, and it worked fine. Um, I still had a few spots that um, I had to use the X-Acto knife to cut, but uh, overall, that worked great. So now we're going to go load up our mat and... Um, put our foil tip in, the bold tip in, and I will be back with you shortly. Okay, so I've got my panel foiled and cut, and now you can see I'm slowly rolling and releasing the cardstock from the mat. Go slow, be careful. It's so gen so fragile that you will tear the tear this. I've had it happen a couple times. So uh, just be careful. Use that 65 pound weight cardstock and look at you're going to get the cutest little bird on a branch. Great for another card panel. And the reason I'm going to show you here is this is why you want that 65 pound weight cardstock. Those really fine lines, heavier weight cardstock, this machine just tears. So use that 65 pound weight. Now these backgrounds are ones I've had in my stash for a long time and I wanted to use them and I thought these backgrounds are perfect for them. And so I'm just going to measure and trim out so that it'll cover the whole backdrop. And then I'm going to add it to a white card base. Now to adhere this down, I used my spray adhesive. I happen to have the Super 7-7 from Scotch, but any spray adhesive is going to work. Not repositionable, you need the permanent stuff. Uh, because there's so many fine details on this die cut here, I'm going to call it a die cut, um, that you don't want to use liquid glue. It's going to get messy on you, so just use some spray adhesive, and that way you'll be able to adhere everything down nice and clean. Once I get this adhered, I'm going to go ahead and throw some double-sided adhesive on the back and then add it to my uh, Axon Opaque 120 pound weight card base, uh, which is great. I use that cardstock. It's very affordable. I use it for ink blending, die cutting, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but if you're interested in receiving this background and the font free, check out the link in the description box below. I'm going to take you there now so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so when you click the link in the description box below, it is going to bring you to this page here. This is my partnership with Creative Fabrica. And what is wonderful is that you can sign up for free and you get your first 10 items downloaded for free. No questions asked. It allows you to really search and find some things that might be useful to you. Uh, I'm coming to you from a card maker's perspective. So, you know, I've got font designs and, you know, background designs like we did today and writing and uh, things like that and stencils. So 
have a look. Maybe you're into uh, knitting and sewing and, and needlework. There's options there that are available to you as well as part of your free 10 downloads. I'm giving you two today with the font and the background, but certainly have a look and see if there's something else that you might like. Um, now, after your 10th download or after one month, your sub subscription is going to renew at $9 a month, which is a really great deal because normally it renews at $29 a month. So great offer if you're wanting to continue after your 10 downloads, I can personally say that I went through and was favoriting all kinds of things. I think I had 200 things that I wanted to try and download, but of course I only had the 10. So when I got to eight, I said, you know what, I'm just going to subscribe and give it a whirl and see how this works for me. You might want to do the same. Now I will say this right now at the airing of this video, May fourth, 2023, they're offering a yearly plan for $59, which breaks it down to $4.99 a month. This is the option that I chose because it's the most affordable. I want to save as much money as I can when it comes to my crafting. So I opted for the $59 a year. But I would jump on that soon if it's something that interests you and you find that you're putting all kinds of stuff in your favorites folder. Um, so that way you can lock in that deal because I'm going to fill you in on a secret. It's lifetime. So if you go with the $59 a year, every year that you renew, it's going to be that $59. If you don't want to pay for the yearly subscription, or maybe you're not sure, you can renew at the $9 a month, and that's lifetime also. So you're never going to get kicked back to the $29 as long as you maintain your subscription with my link. Okay, so lots of options, but definitely try the 10 free downloads. I mean, you're not losing anything by getting 10 free downloads. Um, and of course, you get access to over 7 million items. Now this is an all access pass. So you get access to everything. No questions asked. If you are looking for something in particular, you can ask, you can request for personal designs. Um, commercial license, you got a little side hustle where you sell your stuff. You don't have to worry about getting permission from anybody. You get a commercial license as well. So uh, a great opportunity and really affordable option, but at least give that 10 free downloads a try uh, and see if it's something that is going to work for you. All right, friends, that's going to wrap it up for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Be sure and check the description box below and hit those links and check out Creative Fabrica and sign up for those 10 free downloads. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next video.